Greetings, River Lady here, and you're probably wondering what I'm taking a movie of. I'm taking a movie of this red-tipped vegetation because that leads me into the topic of today, which is red osier dogwood or red twig dogwood. So let me come in a little tighter and you can see the red stems on these plants that are growing right in my marsh. Red twig dogwood love to grow in marshy, wet areas. And I am surrounded by them. This is my little guy. I picked him up the other day at my local nursery. And osier dogwoods are actually related to flowering dogwoods. They're in the same genus, which is cornus. However, unlike flowering dogwoods that become big trees, osier dogwoods become big bushes. But don't lose heart. Pruning an osier dogwood is a lot easier than pruning a flowering dogwood. Osier dogwoods are native to North America and they are hardy between zones 3 and 7. Anything warmer than zone 7 and they have a tough time. But they really can handle the cold weather beautifully. I'm sure you've seen these plants in people's gardens. The bright red stems against the white snow. And that's a cool fact about osier dogwoods. They take on their brilliant color as the temperature outside gets colder. Come summer, the plants tend to get dragged in their color. They tend to have a little more brown tint to their stems, but that's okay because if pruned correctly, they'll have these wonderful little clusters of white flowers that attract pollinators. And at the end of the summer, when the leaves are turning a beautiful copper color, you'll get these white berries that will attract a plethora of birds. And not only do osier dogwood support a ton of pollinators, they are a host plant to the spring azure butterfly, which is this adorable little blue butterfly. So cute! Well, I think I've given you a ton of reasons why you should own an osier dogwood. I am going to get my new osier dogwood in the ground. These are really, truly easy plants to grow. Just give them full sun, make sure they get plenty of water. They love having their roots wet, which is perfect for me because I'm putting it right by this retaining wall. This is the area that gets flooded. So instead of fighting Mother Nature, I'm actually working with her and I'm putting in plants that survive being wet and osier dogwoods are one of those plants. The first thing that I have to do is dig a hole that's about twice as wide as the pot that the plant is in. And in, in truth, I'm not going to do any digging. My friend Bob is here today, so I'm manning the camera and he is doing the digging. Okay, the hole is dug. It's about twice the width of the pot and I had him make it a little shallower than normal you should have the root ball sitting flush with the dirt level, but I'm going to actually raise the dirt level by adding more soil to the garden, so I don't want to bury the plant. You don't want soil mounded up around the stem of the plant. And now the next thing that we're going to do is get this little puppy out of its pot. The easiest way to get a plant out of the pot is to first pound on the sides. That loosens the plant and then it should just pull right out. If pounding on the pot doesn't work for you, you can always cut the pot. But just be careful of the roots. Look at these roots. They are absolutely beautiful. And what I'm going to do, some people actually scrape the roots to, to loosen them, but I don't do that because that can harm the roots. What we're going to do is we're going to fill the hole with water and let the plant soak in the water, which will wash away some of the peripheral dirt and loosen those outer roots. And while the plant was soaking in the water, I forgot to hit record on the camera. Okay, so now I'm having Bob put in a mixture of screened loam and compost. These plants don't really care what kind of pH you're putting them in. They'll grow in alkaline soil or acidic soil. They do prefer the soil be slightly acidic, but they'll take whatever they can get. 
Now, if you notice, Bob's just moving the soil around and he's pressing it down. That pushes out any air pockets. So again, this soil is a combination of screened loam and compost. Feeding an osier dogwood is really easy. Compost, compost, compost. You add compost to the dirt when you plant it. You work compost in around the plant in the springtime. And again, you can do that in the summer when it's done blooming. After you're done adding the soil compost mixture, then you want to work back some of the original soil that you took out of the hole. Pressing firmly, making sure that the plant is straight, and the next thing you do is you give it another blast of water. And there she is. You can put a little gully around your plant to help collect water when it rains, or for when you do water the plant to help collect the water. And that also helps to encourage the roots to spread out and form a really dense network out and around the plant. Okay, so I'll do a follow-up video when she starts producing leaves, and I will do a video about pruning osier dogwoods. And until then, I thank you for watching, and happy gardening.